we often say that actions speak louder than words. This is a, a common uh, kind of talk, but it has very important relevance to this module. This statement shows that we are taking actions and speech separately. But what philosophy suggests, let's see what they say. Philosopher J. L. Austin, British, he says that our speech is an act. So instead of separating them, speech is uh, another thing and uh, action or act is some other thing. He says that speech itself is an act. This is called speech act theory. In simpler words, doing something by saying something, this is called speech act. And the theory that proposes this is called speech act theory. According to this definition of speech act, now if you see this short list, they all are speech act because they are acts which are performed by verbal means through words, through our speech. Hiring, naming, when we name children at the time of birth, or we name uh, some organization, or we name some ship or boat, uh, like that. And then pronouncing judgments. So he, this is an action, definitely. And it also uh, is done through language, through speech. Similarly, pronouncing a couple as husband and wife, nika in other words. So this is also conducted through language, through words. These are actions. And they have effects like physical actions. We give them importance because they have effect on uh, the persons who are involved, who are involved in these actions. So they, uh, their life may be changed. For example, when a couple is declared as a husband and wife, so definitely a new relationship starts as a result of this utterance. Just, just see that, the power of this act. So, as we perform physical acts, so we also perform linguistic or symbolic acts. They all are examples of speech acts. How does speech become act? Let's see there. We use typical utterances in typical situations. Whenever you promise, you use utterances like, I will help you. I will talk to him. I will recommend your name uh, to that person. So such utterances, when you use them over the time, they are associated with the action of promising. So you use typical expressions in typical situations over the period of time and they relate your utterances, your speech with certain acts like the act of promising. This is how speech becomes acts. It means this meaning was assigned by the speaker. Speaker has the power, and this is a common belief in linguistics that uh, it is speakers, it is people who give meaning to words. Words themselves have no meaning. People, language, community gives meaning to words. It is the same thing. So speakers, because they give meaning to utterances, and these utterances perform some act, we call them performatives. These speech acts are also called performatives because we perform some action uh, by them. Speakers have power to do so 
तो दिस इज कॉल्ड दैट स्पीकर्स हैव एजेंसी दे हैव अथॉरिटी दे हैव पावर सो दीज टू टेक्निकल टर्म्स आर इंट्रोड्यूस्ड हियर वन इज परफॉर्मेटिव स्पीच एक्स बिकॉज we perform x through speech performance is involved so we also call them performative and second because meaning is assigned by repeated use of utterances by speakers so we say speakers have agency power to assign meaning to utterances but this agency or authority is bound by social conventions it is not unbridled unlimited uncontrolled agency a speaker's utterance for example if he or she says you are hired this is utterance so when it will become a hiring act of hiring when these conditions these conventions are satisfied what are they for example if the person who hires has authority to hire number 2 the hired has applied for some position and uh, has gone through the process of selection interview test etc and as a result of that some uh, decision was made and then the person pronounces that you are hired in that case this utterance would become act of hiring otherwise not Austin says that we perform x through speech so far we can conclude this butler now austin was from philosophy and this was his opinion butler judith butler she was feminist linguist now she borrowed this theory to show relationship of language and gender in the field of language and gender it was she who introduced it in our field of study she says how she relates this theory with this field she says that like other speech acts gender is also a speech act this is interesting so gender is an act and it is performed through speech and that's why we call it gendering as we call other speech acts uh, like promising inviting agreeing uh, similarly we are calling this act gendering butler brought austen speech theory in this field and in this field she has called it performativity theory of gender name is changed the basic stance and assumption is the same conversation analysis also find out x in speech yes we have seen in the discussion of conversation analysis people when they talk with each other they co perform certain social actions and that's why uh, these actions are uh, known in peers we say invitation acceptance question answer but here the case is different in case of speech act theory or performativity theory in this theory individual speakers talk perform the act the other speaker the other person is not needed in this case so we conclude from this introduction to speech act theory and its introduction into our field that speakers perform through speech gendering is also a speech act and speech act also reveal speakers identity